most of you, I don't know if you, I think I may have read it last night. Dad, have many of you seen uh, Pope Francis in his statement the other day? It's very much controversy. Is anybody familiar with it? Uh, you and I don't believe the Pope is no different than either one of us, but no. millions of people around the world, the Pope, his official title is called uh, Vicar Christ, which is Latin for substitute. In other words, the Pope in the eyes of the Catholics is a substitute for Jesus Christ while the Lord is in heaven. The Pope is, according to the Catholic Church, God on earth. That's what he is, God on earth. He is infallible according to their own words. He cannot make a mistake. That's according to their own words. That's, that's what they say. Uh, I'll say this before I tell you what I always said. Uh, a lot of people believe that Peter was the first Pope. Peter wasn't no Pope. Uh, they'll tell you that all the popes claim to have descended from Peter. But they, they, they'll claim he's the first pope. Uh, Peter was the pope. If he was, uh, why is it that if, if he was the pope and he was high above everybody, then how come old Paul didn't criticize him and he didn't do something to him? You know, he was just on the same level as they were. And then uh, Peter, even in one place, instructed people to not kneel down and worship him to stand up. Now the Pope would let you do that. He'd let you fall down and do that. But anyhow, um, the Pope said the other day on TV on the, in the statement that he made, this is very interesting because it, it, affect, it, it, will have, uh, it will have a ripple effect for a long time, what this man said, because you have to understand, they believe that he is a spokesman for God on earth. Okay, Whatever he says, if yesterday abortion was wrong. If the Pope come along tomorrow and said abortion's okay, then it's okay. Well, the Bible says, and the Pope said yesterday that, uh, you know, the other day, I put it this way. First of all, hell ain't real. Ain't no hell. Why would an ever-loving, compassionate God of infinite wisdom punish anybody and make them go to hell? In the end, everybody's going to end up in heaven. Now, I'm paraphrasing what he said. That's basically, in the end, we're all going to be in heaven. So the Pope's no hell. No. Uh, didn't know that. It, the last one wasn't. The one before him wasn't, but this and this. Mm -hmm. He also said uh, that Adam, the story of Adam and Eve was a fable. He called it the fable of Adam and Eve is what he called it. The reason this is so big, I want you to realize, we're talking about continents. Like Latin America is a continent that is just about every person claims to be Catholic. Millions and millions of people follow this man. Now, we've never believed that they've been on the right path for the Catholic Church and what they believe and advocate. But I want you to think of what kind of impact that's going to have on the way people view the Bible and what it says. It has taken millions of people and moving them in another direction. He also said that there's a bunch of ways to get to heaven. A whole bunch of ways. Not just matter of fact, he said this. He said it doesn't really matter what you believe. If it's true to you, it's true. That's what he, that's what he said. Mm -hmm. Now, many of y'all heard that or not? Now, about a month ago, the Pope made some comments about the <coughs> economics of the world. And what he said about the economics of the world has writers and people all over talking about it. They call him a Marxist, is what they're calling him. And what he said was Marxism. It was full-blown Marxism. Now, he was concerned uh, ec the economics of the world and stuff. And uh, so he got some ridicule for that. People said the Pope was a Marxist. They said, well, no, he ain't a Marxist. And then he comes along... And he makes this statement here the other day. John. Now let me explain how this is all connected. The man who's supposed to be in the highest office on earth, according to the Catholic Church, God himself, believes in two philosophies that the only way you can believe in them is you can't believe in God. Don't you think about that for a minute. Uh, oh. 
There's a man who they say is God on earth. He's an admitted Marxist. In order to believe the, the, the theories and doctrines and ideologies of Marxism, you can't believe in God. Now, people questioned that. And then he came along and he said, whatever you believe is true to you, it's true. That's what Marxism teaches. Marxism teaches there's no absolutes. There's no absolute, nothing is absolutely true. He even said that as time goes on and evolves, God evolves and changes. That's what he said. The Pope said that. You quoted the verse just a minute ago. I am God. I change not. That's what God said. But yeah. the Pope said that God changes. So, millions of people around the world are going to believe that God changes. Even though His Word says, I change not, they're going to believe that. I change not, therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not yeah. consumed. Yes. You see, if God did change, He would consume us. Because he would get angry with the things that we do and he would consume us and take our yeah. lives. Yeah. But because God doesn't change, he's first a merciful God. Yeah. And since he doesn't change, he always has mercy. Even though we deserve punishment and be consumed, God still has mercy on us. Yeah. Now, according to the Pope, this is leading somewhere else. The Catholic Church, according to the Pope, is getting ready to endorse same-sex marriage is what's going to happen. They're going to endorse it because the Pope's going to say you got to love everybody. And if you think it's right, it's right. That's what's going to happen. The largest denomination of so-called believers on earth are being led down a path that is nothing but full-blown, 100% Marxism and globalism is what it is. That's a lot of people. They don't have as much influence in America as they do in other countries. But their politics, their economics will be a reflection of the religion of that country. Yeah. You are seeing a move as this continues to progress. You will see more and more countries embrace the doctrines of socialism. And you will start to see the very things that's happening in this country yeah. that's happening at a slow pace will be accelerated in countries, other, other countries. Yeah. It will be accelerated. It's, it's, it's very complicated to try to explain this, but it, it, it's what's happened. The world, as, it, as the old saying goes, is changing. Well, every time this happens, in the Bible you can read all the way through it, every time that these radical changes take place, you start seeing God punish His people. He punishes them. He, he, he takes something away from them. And He doesn't uh, spare them uh, any punishment but he also is merciful to them in the end. That's what's wonderful about it. He pours his wrath out, but he's still merciful to them. Let me explain this the best the Lord will bless me here. Because I think it's, it's needful that God's people, if more of God's people understood this stuff, they would be more alarmed by it. It's because we don't understand a lot of it. But here's the way it works. There's two philosophies in this world. There's, you always hear there's darkness and there's light. There's good and there's evil. These two ideas. One idea is there's a creator God. The other idea is there is not a creator God. People in this world view things from their worldview. We believe that there's a God. So everything that we look at goes back to that fundamental belief that we believe in God. We see the sun come up in the morning, we give God the credit for it. Yeah. You, uh, founding fathers of this country wrote down that we were endowed by our creator Yeah. With life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. With certain inalienable rights, it says that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They said that we are endowed by our Creator. That means God gave us these rights. I wrote an article about three years ago, put in the newspaper. I put it right up here. Government is not the source of rights. A lot of people believe they get their rights from the government. I had children at school, I'll say, Where do your rights come from? Well, they're in the Constitution. Constitution don't give you your rights. No. Constitution states your rights. Your rights come from God Almighty. We are a nation of people that were that were born in this belief that God gave us our freedom. God gives us our rights as human beings. Yeah. Government works for us. The rest of the world, the world especially that doesn't believe in God, they have another viewpoint. They believe that a document gives you your rights. And a document can be erased. And it can be changed. Yeah. And without realizing it, their rights do not come from a creator. Their rights come from the government. 
And the government is essentially their God. That's what it is. That's how it works. Over in Europe, you ask people where their rights come from, they'll tell you from a document that Parliament signed. Well, Parliament can unsign that document. But you see, they, that's the, what they're used to because a lot of them don't believe in God. They believe that government gives them their rights. Well, here's, here's how the government gets in position to give you those rights. Here's how it works. If everybody is in agreement what is right and what's wrong, Government don't have to give us our rights. We know what's right and what's wrong. We don't even have to have laws. I know that I ain't supposed to go into my neighbor's house and steal something. We all know that. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a few people that don't do what they know, so we have to have a law for it. The law ain't for us. The law is for the ones that don't do what they know they shouldn't do. Right. Okay? But here's the way it works. We know this. Where do we get it? How do we know this? How do we know to treat one another good? We're raised up in it. It comes from this. Yeah. You're raised in it. Mm -hmm. My family, my grandparents, my great grandparents, yeah. they all had a belief in something that told them what was right and wrong. Yeah. It comes from this book. <laughs> well, if there is no right and wrong, like the Pope said, if what you say is right, and what you say is right, and what you say is right, then there is confusion. Yeah. Does that make sense? There's confusion. But when we're all in agreement, there's no confusion. But when there is confusion, and that's exactly what these people want, they want confusion. They want you to say, well, I believe that same-sex marriages are fine. I believe it's okay to, to have an abortion. I believe it's okay to steal from my neighbor if he's got more than I've got. <laughs> See, they, they want everybody to have a different opinion. Yeah. Yeah. When there's a different opinion, there is confusion. Yeah. And when there is confusion, somebody has to come in and calm the situation down. And the somebody that comes in and calms the situation down is the almighty government. That's who it is. Yeah. This is by design. The things that you see happening, you see the things that you hear the Pope saying, he's not just promoting his religious philosophy, he's promoting a political and economic philosophy. He is telling everybody in the world that whatever you believe, as long as it feels good to you, it's okay. Well, that's the religion of the day. That's not the religion of God. No. Because you can read in the Bible. If you don't believe me, pick up your book and start reading. Read the book of Jeremiah. Read the book of Lamentations and read and see what it says. This is what the Lord says over here in some of these places. You see where these people have done all these things, God's people. And every time that they started turning inwardly to their self, Every time that they started trusting in their self, God punished those yeah. people. Yeah. He turned them over to a reprobate mind yeah. and He let them suffer just to show them how much power He had. Mm -hmm. And when He got them down to the point to where they was on begging ground asking for deliverance, that's when God was merciful and picked them back up. The Pope said that God changes. God said He doesn't. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. God will let you get right down as low as you can get just to show yeah. you, yeah. not just as a person, but as a nation also, yeah. how far you can get yeah. without God. Okay, That's where we're headed. And we're not headed uh, uh, slowly tumbling. We're on a death spiral yeah. downhill at about 150 mile an hour yeah. right now is what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And the rest of the world are going a whole lot faster than we are. Over here in the book of Jeremiah, this is what happened. This is what the writer, the prophet, wrote this. This the word of the Lord came unto him and spoke to him and told him these things. And he writes this, the prophet does, and he is telling the nation Israel what is about to happen to them. God's chosen people. And I've quoted this verse many times and there's a bunch of other examples in here. But this is what he says. He says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. He says, my people, God's people. You see, God's got a people of every nation, kindred, and tongue. Yeah. He said, my people have committed two evils. They've yeah. done two things here. Number one, they have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. That's what they've done. They have forsaken God. Today, thus saith the Lord, the Bible, there is no room for it. There is absolutely no room for it in this world. You saw it about two, three, four weeks ago when uh, uh, that Robertson man uh, made a quote of the Bible and even yeah. prefaced it by saying, I don't hate anybody. I don't hate anybody. I ain't placing judgment, but God's Word says this. Yeah. 
There's no room for that in this world today. Back when I was growing up, people would have feared and trembled at that. Yeah. Before that, people would have feared and trembled. Yeah. They reverenced the Word of God. Yeah. We're living in a place today where they do not reverence that because they are being told from the left, from the far left, being told all the time, consistently, that whatever you think feels good is all right with us. Whatever you think is okay is okay. You're your own little God. That's what yeah. they're telling you. Did you know that? They're saying you're your own little God. That's exactly what the Pope just told millions of people the other day. Whatever you think feels good is okay. We don't need to judge people. Don't you think it's interesting that the people that quote the Bible the most are the people that know absolutely nothing about it. You'll say, the Bible says this, and then you'll have millions of them come in and say, what kind of Christian are you? You're judging somebody. Yeah. Let me tell you, the Bible tells us not to judge lest you be judged. But it also instructs us to be fruit inspectors. Yeah. It tells us that you will know them by the fruits that they bear. Yeah. If you see an apple, you'll know it's an apple. Yeah. And if yeah. you see a rotten fruit, you're going to know it's rotten yeah. fruit. Right. And now let me tell you what the Lord did. When they came there, to, uh, when John the Baptist was baptizing them, really and they Lord. came to where he was at, John the Baptist did some uh, fruit inspecting, mm -hmm. and he said, "Ye generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee for the wrath yeah. to come? Yeah. Something was coming, and them people knew it. They knew that something was coming upon yeah. them. Yeah. The wrath of God was getting ready to be poured out upon Israel. Yeah. It was getting ready, and they came out to see what they could do to get away from it. Amen. But you see, they were the reason that it was coming in the first place. Yeah, it was their fault. Yeah, yeah. They're the ones that turned their back on God. Right. Says, Jerry, yeah, you have forsaken me, the fountain of living water. Yeah. We're talking about living water. He says, and this is what they done. You have hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. He says, you've dug a cistern out beside your house. Sometimes they dig a cistern out in the west, and the water will come off the roof and settle in it, and it'll sit there. Yeah. Back in the, uh, the old day, you used to take a barrel out to the corner of the house, let the rainwater fall in it, and dip it yeah. out in the garden yeah. and the flares. Yeah. Well, that water ain't good to drink after it sits there a while. No. The no. Lord says, you had living water. You had water flowing from a fountain. Now, flowing water is clean water. Yeah. Water that flows is being refreshed. Yeah. He said, you had living water flowing from a fountain, yeah. and that wasn't good enough for you. You had to go out here and dig a cistern to catch water running off the roof of your house that's going to sit there and it's going to get stagnant. It's going to have bugs in it. Yeah. It's going to have dust in it. Yeah. It's not going to do you a lick of good, but yet you'd rather have that than you would have this good stuff that's flowing from yeah. a living source. Yeah. And let me tell you, it gets worse than that. He tells them it's bad enough that you've dug a cistern. The ones you've dug won't even hold water. Yeah. The ones you've dug won't even hold bad water. Right. That's the world we live in today. Yeah. You want the doctrine that you're hearing won't even hold bad water. It's not good for me and you to drink of. But yet God has placed before yeah. us yeah. something, brother, that He has given us yeah. living water. And He even says in one place that He would cause fountains of living water to flow up from within yeah. us. Yeah. He'll cause us to be the very source yeah. to let it come yeah. up within us. Yeah. But yet the world will go around there and tell you, no, you've got to do this. Yeah. What if it feels all right with you, it's okay. That's not what the Lord no, says no, because no. you read over here what the Lord does to these people. The Lord takes these people right here and He tells them what's going to happen. Yeah. He says the king of Babylon is going to come down and lay siege to your city. He's going to tear the walls down and him and his men are going to sit in your high places in the midst of the street and they are going to ridicule you. They are going to kill you and they are going to kill your children and this is going to become theirs. Well, let me tell you, we are sitting back. I want you to think about this. The majority of the people were in the city. They were God's people, but yet they had turned their back from God and turned their self under the ways yeah. of the world. Amen. And the yeah. Lord let a smaller group of people come in and take over their city and tear down their walls and build them up a place right there yeah. in the midst of yeah. Don't you think for one minute yeah. that, how that 2% of the population or 3% of the population can't take over over uh, uh, this very country because brother they're doing it every second yeah. every minute yeah. of the day and a lot of the problem uh, originates right here in the pulpit yeah. and in the pew back there because God's yeah. people 
are sitting back and they are lukewarm. And what does the Bible say about being lukewarm? Tell the Lord, would rather we be hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, He's going to spew you yeah. out. Now let me tell you what God's people need to do, Brother Noah. We need to be like the one that Ezekiel saw there and said, stand upon the walls of yeah. Zion. What he said, I looked up and I saw a beast that had a four legs yeah. and wings yeah. and four faces. And brother, this beast, I had four faces. And let me tell you those four what faces, they what they were. One was like it unto a man. And one face was like it unto a lion. And one face was like it unto an ox. Yeah. And one face like it unto an eagle. Yeah. I'm declaring to you today that Ezekiel was saying this. He said, You see these men. said, says, which has said, <clears throat> and they came in and possessed it. Talking about the city. Let <clears throat> me go back before us and read this. Which has set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, even unto this day, and in Israel, and among other men, and has made thee a name as at this day. God's people have a name. The kingdom of God has a name all over this earth. And that name is starting to get trampled on and trampled on and trampled on, worse and worse. He said, I have brought thy, forth thy people Israel out of the land of Egypt with signs and with wonders, with a strong hand and with a stretched out arm and with great terror. God has delivered His people. Not just then, He's delivered me and you in the same way. Yeah. He has blessed our yeah. forefathers to come from persecution, like I told you before, to come over into this land. Yeah. This right here, brethren, is a good land for yeah. God's people. God, I believe, ordained this land and yeah. blessed God's people to come here. We came here because we were God-fearing people. Yeah. This is part of that promised land, brother, that He blessed us. Amen. We're living in the kingdom of God and He's blessed us to live in a wonderful country because we have the freedom to worship Him. But He goes on, He tells me, He said He stretched out His arm. He did this how? With great terror. There's been wars fought yeah. for our freedom. We have came with great terror to possess this good land that God has given us. And He says it has, been, has given them this land. God give you this land. No Nobody else gave it to you. God gave it to you. He said, and did swear to the fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. There is a land flowing with yeah. milk and honey. God's yeah. people are blessed to live in it. We are abundantly blessed to live in a wonderful nation, but brethren, we're living in the Amen. kingdom of God. Amen. There's a table that's been set before us here yeah. in the presence of our enemies and we're eating and we're dining, but brethren, we have to also look up and recognize there are enemies out there. Yeah. And if we are ashamed to own the Lord, the Lord will be ashamed to own Amen. The Bible says the nation that turns its back on God shall be cast yeah. into hell. Yeah. I'll tell you, we got one leg in the bar right now. Amen. And if we don't change our ways, the whole body's going to be dead. Yeah. Yeah. And when the Lord removes that candlestick, we'll yearn for the days of old when we can come out to the house of the Lord. We'll not be able to feel the Spirit. If the Lord does not, He takes the candlestick out, there will be no light shining. In the temple, there was a candle over here on one side. Over here on the other side in the tabernacle, there was showbread. Twelve loaves of bread. Candle over here shining on the bread. That light, that light is God. That bread is Jesus Christ. If the Lord removes that candle, you can't see the bread. You will be wishing and longing to feel the Spirit of God. He'll take it away from you. 
Yeah. Said in one place in the book of Revelation, Lo, I stand at the door and knock. How many times have you heard people saying the Lord's knocking on your heart's door begging you to come in? You can take a, like I said, locomotive headlight, shine it right down on that. That is not what that says. No. no. That is not no. what that says. It says to the church yeah. and lay out to see it. To the church. A church is a called out assembly. It okay. is not dead alien sinners in the world. No. The Lord said, Behold, uh, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will let me in, I will come in with him and I will suffer yeah. with him and I will yeah. die with him. If you ain't got no place for the Lord in your church, brother, if all you're worried about is pleasing man out here, if all you're worried about it's putting up a ball going, having yeah. a thing go hard. Yeah. 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 Amen. The Amen. Lord's not coming in the house. Uh, no. uh, there's no liberty there and nobody's eating. Uh, uh, that good bread no. that comes down from God out of heaven. They're not being blessed to eat it. There's a famine in the land and they're riders. Amen. I think there was a famine going to come. Uh, and brother, famine and pestilence uh, has already arrived. God's people today are hungry for the truth. Uh, yeah. Jesus Christ said, I am the way. Amen. The truth the life. Uh, glory be to God. Lord, we should stand and be bold upon the walls of Zion and cry out and spare not that salvation is of the Lord. Yeah, watch them yeah. upon the walls. Don't be ashamed to cry out right. and say, right. oh, that's said the Lord. Yeah. I will not tolerate it. Yeah. I will not stand for it if the Lord Himself does not approve it. Amen. Amen. Look over here and says Amen. this. He says, and they came in, talking about the, this is the people, this is what God did. Remember I told you a minute ago, Jeremiah told them what was going to happen? After they punished, after they suffered and did all these things, this is what the Lord did. Remember the Pope said that he changed. God said, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob were not consumed. If God changed, me and you be hurt. Yeah, yeah, we buddy. would be yeah, hurt. Yeah, buddy. But David said his mercy endureth forever. Is what yeah, David said. After they suffered, transgressed the law of God. God did all those things. Nebuchadnezzar came in, tore down their walls. Nebuchadnezzar and his men sat in the midst of the city in the high places, declared that they were God of that city. Killed the women and the children. Persecuted them, took them into captivity. And this is what God did. God says, remember when I took you out of bondage in Egypt and led you up into the good land? And they came in and possessed it, but they obeyed not thy voice, neither walked in thy law. They have done nothing of all that thou commandest them to do. Therefore thou hast caused all this evil to come upon them. Said right there, God will cause evil to come. Oh, the Lord wouldn't do that. That's what people will tell you. They'll tell you God won't do that. God is a Santa Claus. Did y'all not know that? He's Santa Claus. He wants to give everybody presents. He loves everybody. Yeah. He loves everything everybody does. That's the do doctrine of the devil. Yeah. That's the doctrine yeah. of the devil is what that yeah. is. It says your God caused this evil to come upon them people. You read over here in the book of Mark, the 13th chapter of Matthew, 24th chapter, and the Lord looks at the apostles and they're standing there upon the city after He gets done speaking up on the Mount of Olives and He looks at them and they say, Lord, what mean you by this? Yeah. He said, see these uh, stones? See these buildings that you see around here? Yeah. Not one of these stones is going to be left unturned. Yeah. Not one of these stones. Every stone you see this city that I'm standing in right now, the Lord said, this city is going to fall. And those of you that are standing here listening to me are going to live to see it happen. You're going to see it happen. Yeah. Forty years after the Lord went to the cross, the city went back to heaven. Forty years later, the wrath of God was poured about on that city and God took that city away from those people. He took it away from them and He says over here in His Word, that was the old Jerusalem. Yeah. He took that city away from those people and you read what John the writer said. The Lord comes said He looked up to heaven and saw a new Jerusalem come down from God out of heaven. Yeah. Uh, that old Jerusalem yeah. was destroyed because God's people were vengeful. They did yeah. not obey the Word of God. And let me tell you, God can take this one away. Amen. Amen. This same new Jerusalem that come down, God can take it away. Yeah. Yeah. The signs are everywhere. We're no different than the household no. of faith of Israel. No. We are no different. That's right. They transgressed the law of God. Look what God has blessed us with. People say to you, they'll say this all the time. They'll say, well, America, and even our own president said, we're not a Christian nation. I'll tell you what, he was right. We ain't now. No. But we were. Yeah. We were. Yeah. yeah. You see, America was, it's very simple. You stop and look at the persecution. I heard an elder Sonny Powell from Texas say one time that he believed everything is in him. And I believe this. 
that God's people, the Gentiles, faced the same persecution that the Jews did. The Jews came up out of Egypt, went into the good land, right? The Gentiles faced persecution in Europe during the Reformation. You heard of the Inquisition where they hung people and everything. They had to go somewhere. They, Columbus finds this new world over here. And guess where all of them end up going? Boy, it was a land that had everything, did it? Abundance. How wonderfully blessed were we as a nation? Yeah. Wonderfully blessed. Yeah. You know, Congress, this is something that people don't know. People tell you today, you can't have a Bible. Oh, you can't have a Bible in school. I got one that sits on my desk. I'll even get it out sometimes and uh, read something out of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm dangerous. Uh, I'll read something out of it. You know who? You know the first Bible that was ever printed in the United States? You know who had it printed? Congress. Congress took up money from taxes. A commission that thousands of Bibles be made. And guess what the reason was? So that they could be used as a textbook in our schools. That was our own Congress that said that. And then people will tell you, oh no, you can't do that. It's about 2 to 10% that tells us that we can't do that. That's right. The other 90% we sit on the hands. As I said the other day at church, we sit on the stool and do nothing is what yeah. we do. Yeah. We sit there. Just like the nation of Israel, we sit there and we just roll in the benefits. We don't do nothing. The Lord says that they, He ordained us uh, unto good works that we should walk there very good. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. good works. Yeah. There's something for me and you to do. Yeah. Yeah. We are spoiled. We're yeah. spoiled. Yeah. When you look and you see, I often wonder why maybe there ain't as many people here. We're caught up in the things of the world, but is it possible that we ain't getting out of it what they used to get out of it? Because yeah. yeah. we don't put into it what they used to put into yeah. it. Yeah. Maybe that's, right. that's, yeah. that's why. Yeah. Maybe that's why. Yeah. Maybe that's why. Maybe we don't put the effort into it that they did. That's why they got more out of it. Yeah. So they were being blessed in the kingdom, weren't they? Yeah. We're the same way. We're no different. Read over sometimes and uh, we'll read this to you and I'll take my seat. Ezekiel said there was four, this image, this beast here had four faces. I don't know, it, I can't understand. It said it turned and it turned not. I don't understand what he means by that. But there was four faces upon this. I believe he's talking about preachers. I believe he's talking about God's children. He said their faces and their wings were stretched up mighty and great. One was like uh, a lion, one was like an ox, one was like an eagle, and one was like a man. You see a preacher, he's a man. That's the face of a man. That's what a preacher is. He's just a man. Sometimes, when he is blessed to stand in the Word, he roars like a lion. Don't he? Amen. Sometimes, when he's blessed in the Spirit, he can soar like an eagle. Like, it ain't no different for you all either. It's the same way. Yep. You can you can cry uh, loud too and spare not, and you can be blessed to roar like a lion. And what will happen? You will soar like an eagle. Hey, all of them faces had had wings. I thought that was amazing. All of them had wings. But it said one of the faces was like an ox. Yeah. And you ever seen some of you? I ain't never uh, seen it other than on TV and pictures. But two old ox, they'll put them together, yoke them together. Now they're pulling a load, buddy. They'll get right down yeah. on them front knees and they'll lean as hard as they can and pull that yeah. stuff forward. Yeah. yeah. Well, God's people get down on their knees together. Uh, Something's going to happen. Something's going to move. Yeah. Something's going to move. What's yeah. going to happen? It's no different yeah. for me and you. We can be uh, the same people. But if we're not, we're going to end up being the same people. We're going to suffer because God's going to bring this suffering on us. When the Lord told him in the 24th chapter of the book of Matthew, he tells them that he's going to come in judgment. People read the 24th chapter of the book of Matthew and they'll read the 13th chapter of the book of Mark. They'll tell you all that's about the end of the world. No. Some of it is, but all of it ain't. So the Lord's going to come. You ever heard one said be one grinding at the wheel? One will be taken. There'll be yeah. one uh, here yeah. and one will be taken. Yeah. That's that rapture where everybody will disappear, they say. You know, that ain't what that is. When the Lord came in judgment, and I told you a minute ago, He told them people, he said, when you can look at the fig tree and see the signs of the leaves. So you look at the fig tree and when it starts getting white, the fig leaves start getting white, it's ready to bear fruit. He said, when you look and you see that, you'll know it's time. It's just the same way. All this stuff that Jeremiah wrote about over here, Daniel wrote about, all that stuff, the Lord was saying, you can see all these signs that the prophets told you about. When you see those signs coming now, it's the coming day of the Lord. The Lord came in judgment on those people. 
People tell you he came. Some people believe the Lord came back that day. 70 AD. They believe the Lord done came back already. Some people actually believe that. They believe that's, uh, I forget what they call those people, but uh, but they believe the Lord's already come back. They believe he came back on 70 AD when the Israel was destroyed over there. The Lord didn't came, come back that way. He came in judgment upon them people. He, he told them he was going to come in judgment upon them. And he did. He said there'll be some standing here, some standing here that will see that this generation shall not pass until these things yeah. happen. He told them, you're not going to die. This is going to happen. I'm going home, but this is going to happen. And it came in judgment. He took it away from them. And what the Bible says, it says the Lord is going to take the kingdom away from them and give it to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. A nation that bears the fruits that are worthy of God's mercy is the ones he's going to give it to. That's me and you, the Gentiles. And now look what we're doing with it. Yeah. We're doing the same thing they did. Yeah. And what happened when they did it? God came in judgment. You wonder why bad times and bad things are happening? Yeah. God's coming in judgment. Yeah. But the Lord also, as I read to you a minute ago, what happened to him over there? He still blessed him to go into a land of milk and honey, did he? Still blessed them to inherit that. Well, the one that we're looking forward to is heaven. Yeah. The other promised land was that physical land over there. Ours is that heaven at home. I believe that the Lord will bless us through the trials and tribulations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But on the end of that, we're going home to be with the Lord. Yeah. That's a wonderful thing. Yeah. We're coming into that kingdom. And why? Because of the mercy of God. Now that's the God I believe in. It's not the God I believe the Pope believes in. It's the one I believe in. Yeah, Amen. me too. We'll come to a song, publish the church door open. If there be anybody like to have a home with us while we sing, come and let it be known. <clears throat>